everybody. The Clico Atom printer, which comes with the Clico Atom, and is required because the power supply in here, doesn't get much love. First time anybody, the first thing anybody who gets a Clico Atom wants to do is replace this with a power supply. I did it myself. Five years ago, first thing I wanted to do, replace it with a power supply, which I did. And I kept doing and I actually made power supplies and sold them to people and then I actually made internal modifications to the atom with power supplies and sold that service to people but now I kind of like the printer if you think back to the 80s one of the biggest things you'd want or one of the yeah one of the biggest things you would want with your computer after a disk drive of course would be a printer you want to be able to print what you're doing. Now we take that for granted. We don't print what we're doing anymore. Now it's on our phone or it's on the computer in a PDF file. But back then, we wanted to be able to print what we were doing. But I do understand that some people don't like the printer connected to the atom because it's loud. When it turns off, it makes noise. When it turns on, it makes noise. When you reset the computer, it makes noise. And to show you what it's doing, in case you don't have your Atom available, I'll just take old shaky cam here. And I'm gonna turn it off. Move the print head over some. Make sure we're recording. Uh, where's the recording? Yeah, it's been a couple days since I used shaky cam. Start the recording. When you turn it on, that print head has to move over there. It has to reset the brain freeze. The daisy wheel, daisy wheel. And then it's ready to go. Whenever you hit the reset, it resets the daisy wheel again, and it's ready to go. Today, I'm gonna show you how to disable that. There's a simple way of disabling it. Again, let me turn shaky cam on here. A simple way to disable that is to go down inside here and yank all these wires out. Yeah, that disables it. But then if you want to use it, you got to yank, put all those wires back in. I'm going to show you a different way today. We're going to give the printer some love. Okay, so. To make the modification we're going to do on the printer, we need some stuff to work with. We need four pieces of wire. I'm using blue and purple because that's the color of the wires inside of the printer that we're going to be placing. And about eight inches long. I stripped the ends off of each one. And then I have this just floating around. It's a four, uh, four switches in a little container here. I only need two of them. Oh, I'm going to use it instead of buying something. Soldering iron and solder. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try to solder on camera. Well, maybe I got to move things first. Okay, I moved things around a little bit. My soldering iron was too far over. It's still a little hard to work with. I may end up having to do this off of camera. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to solder a blue wire and a blue wire, a purple wire and a purple wire on there. So let's see if I can do it. That's flux right there. If you curious what that was. So I'm going to tin the end here. And that don't look too good. Let's see if I can fix that. Twist it up tighter. There it goes. Smoke. Lots of flux smoke. Is it bad that I like the smell of flux? Might be. Alright, so let's tin the end of that. And then see if we can just Solder that on there. Come on. Probably help if I had a little vice. I should pick one up. It would probably help a lot if I had a little vice, but let's just see what we can do. I may need to put some more flux on that. Come on. Oh, come on, really? You're not doing too well, really. All right, off camera. Okay, 
So I'm back here. See what I ended up doing? I just ended up using my pair of pliers here just to hold it in place while I soldered the wires on. Yeah, I probably could have taken a perp board and put it on a perp board. But what I'm doing is something very simple. Now what I'm going to get out is I'm going to get my glue gun out. And I'm not worried about those two in the middle. They're not getting used. They can stay there all they want. I'm going to use my glue gun and I'm going to fill this up with glue to make it so that they are nice and strong. Okay, so I got the hot glue plugged in, hot glue gun. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to build a blob of glue up here just to hold everything so that it moves around on me. Just go in the middle. I'm going to try to let you see what I'm doing, but it's obvious what I'm doing. I'm just squeezing out some hot glue. If you're at all familiar with the atom, if you've taken the atom apart, you know that Kaliko love their hot glue. There's a lot of it inside that system. So this is just following the tradition. And then once this dries, I'm just gonna I just want to make sure that those things don't flop around in there. So now that's gonna cool off, and when it cools off without sticking to the table, it will just stand it right here. Or hang on to it. When it cools off, it'll stop things, it won't let things flop around. I'm gonna come back with some shrink wrap, put a shrink wrap on the end here. Just so again to hold things together. You'll see what I'm going where I'm going with this. So we're gonna do that next. Alright, so now the hot glue is cool enough to not burn me. I got some heat shrink tubing right here. I'm gonna just slide all these down in here. Again, this is another good reason why I use the colors. So I don't have to worry about which wire is where. I know purples go to purples, blue go to blue. And I'll bring this down in here, about so. I'm going to take some hot glue and fill it in some more. Take my little thingy and just heat up the shrink wrap, just the, or the shrink tube, just to hold it in place. I'm glad that the hot glue is not flammable. So yeah, that's done there. Now that would stop anything from like flopping around. And yeah, I'm gonna squirt a little bit more glue in the hole there. So let's get the hot glue done. And there goes the, what do you call it, lighter on the floor. So let's just squirt some more hot glue up inside this hole here. And my phone buzzes. Mute your phone so it don't make noise when you're doing things. Yeah, I'll do that. Then the phone says, oh, you need to know this, and it buzzes. So there we go. Don't it look pretty, but it's gonna work. I'll go ahead and stop this now, and we'll get started with the next section. I removed the printer from the set. I have it over here. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna disassemble it. Disassembling the printer is not too hard. You just need to know what you're doing. First off, make sure your print head's down to one side before you roll this. You don't want it to be up here and then you turn on the side and the print head falls. So, turn it that way. And also, watch these. Don't put a lot of pressure on them, they will snap. So we really don't want to lay the printer down on that completely. But I do need to put the printer down. So what I'm going to do is this. And I'm going to take, if I can, yes, put that bundle of wires under there. Because what I got to do is there's seven screws. There's eight holes, but there's seven screws. Click going to Infinite Wisdom made eight holes and realized one of the screws wouldn't work. So I can remove the seven screws. Got it all around the side. This screwdriver is a little stripped. So sometimes it rolls around on the screw. Notice I got a little crack here on the bottom of my case. I didn't realize this one had it. Oh, and there too. This is one of those ones that I got. I mentioned in another video, I believe, where I discuss the, that's the one that's missing, the Caligo Adams and the three printers I picked up for 125 or 150 bucks. And they were pretty damaged. This one actually is not too bad, but I didn't realize the bottom was cracked. I could always change that. Uh, I know you're not really seeing much here. My hand keeps getting in the way. 
I could change that. I have a couple other. I have like a half dozen spare printers floating on there. Okay, so I got all the seven screws out. Now these brackets right here, I'm gonna to need to remove them too. So I'm gonna just do them right now. Take the screws out, two screws on each side and the bracket, if I can get it up. If not, I'll let it fall out when I flip it over. Put the screws over there in a the little container. All right, so now we should have it to the point where we can flip it back over and take the cover off. Again, be careful. You don't want to break those pieces. And there goes things, as I expected them to do. Screw fell on the floor. Shake, pull the cover off. Set the cover off to the side. And let's get the screws. One, two, one fell on the floor, and it makes three, four, five, six, and we got one more floating around somewhere. Seven. Seven screws. One metal bracket. Another metal bracket. All right. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to grab a Sharpie, which I don't have here, so I'll pause camera. Okay, I got a Sharpie now. What I'm going to do now is these cable connectors here, I want to mark them. One, two, three, and four. Just so I remember which way they go in. The other one is obvious which way it goes in. So, this one here, lift up the little tab, and you may not be able to see it but there's a tab holding it right there. Lift that little tab up. And again, work around the camera. Lift that little tab up, pull the wire out, one out. These right here, they slide out too. Okay, they must not have come out before for a while. Here we go, let's go one. One way out. There we go. Once you get one started, you can usually get the rest going. Two, three, and four. Okay. Now, the motor mechanisms are all disconnected from the printer control board right here. This is the actual miniature computer that runs the printer. Now we need to remove some screws. Not those. There are other screws. Right there. And right there. Let's get this one out first. The, the screw holds a little metal bracket in. I guess that's to stop prying hands from touching the high voltage. Well, what is it like? I think the maximum is 12 volts DC, but yeah, I guess it's to stop little kids from getting electrocuted. Slide that one back that way. Again, like I said, the other one's right there. Remove that one. I can't hold it up in the air and do it. But believe me when I say it's right there and that's the one you remove. Okay, that one's out. Now if you've worked on these, here's a screw, a uh, washer there. If you worked on these before, you'll realize that Coleco didn't always use the same screws from one system to the next. I don't know why, maybe they just got a bargain. One screw here, that's your ground for the motor. And then one screw there, one screw there. Let's get this one out. And this one has a wood screw tape design. And the other one I was working on a while ago had a regular screw like you would use with a nut. Again, whatever they had floating around they used. Or it went into repair and came back. Eh, screw fell down the side. I'll get it. One more here. And now what I've done is I have now disconnected the power supply from the printer and the control board. So we're going to lift that up and slowly wiggle it out. And there we go. And there's the screw that dropped. Here's another screw that dropped, and fascinatingly, I have a broken standoff in there. Where that screw that I said had a washer on it came off, the standoff was just floating around, so it's not held down too well. 
We've got to set the printer mechanism to the side. We're not using that right now. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to take the power supply here. Move it to it's easier to get to. There are four screws or four yeah four screws holding the printer controlled. This is power supply. That's the main transformer. This is power supply. This is printer control board. We're going to take those four screws out. Some, let me remove this first. This is the power. Just makes it easier to move things when I get to it. Then we're going to take these four screws out. Like I said. From what I can tell, there's no juice floating around in here. But if I like scream and fall down and then laugh about it, well, that means there's juice in it still. But like I said, I don't think there is juice in there. I'll just be careful not touch anything. Isn't that right, Millie? Just be careful. These are hard to get out. I'm just gonna flop and drop them out once I get the board loose. So those four screws loosens up the board the printer control board and there you go now if you were inclined to not want to have a printer at all you just want a power supply you can snip these three wires right there and there's your power supply no printer ever again plug that into your ad and you're good to go we want the printer we just don't want it to do, make noise so you look at these wires here this one right here your violet that's your data your blue that's your reset, your black, or it may be just bare wire. That's your shield. Remember, I got purple and or violet and blue on purpose because I wanted to match these colors. Now you probably know what I'm doing. I'm going to take and I'm going to hook the purple up here and hook the purple up to that and the blue and the blue. And now I'll have this sitting out here and I'm going to have... Oh, I should look at the camera occasionally. I'm going to hook these up here. Purple to purple, and then to, to the board, blue to blue, then to the board, and have the little switches right here, out where I can get to them, and I can turn it on and off as needed. So now I gotta plug in my soldering iron, and we gotta desolder some stuff, so pause the camera. Okay, now I'm back. Soldering station's all hooked up, everything's good to go. First thing I gotta do is I gotta unhook these two wires, the blue and the purple. So there's your purple right there. And what I'm gonna use is I'm gonna use a solder sucker I got. You could use just a solder wick if you wanted. Heat this up. And see, nice clean hole there. Now let's find the blue. The blue one is this one right here. Just verify it, look back and forth just to be sure. The blue one is right there. That's the black. That's the blue. We want the blue. That's still a little stuck on the edge there. The holes for these wires are monstrous, as you can probably see. Okay, now. Now, if, just keep in mind, the blue goes to E3, the violet goes to E7. Write that down if you want to remember it. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my, my wires right here. And I'm going to run my violet into the E7 hole and solder it. I could disconnect that black wire right there, but I guess it's okay. Get a nice little twist on that. Stick it through the hole, bend it over a little bit. I'm going to cut off the excess. Huh. I can get it to stay in the hole, it is. Get in there. Bend it up there. Just stay there. All right, now some flux to help things stick. Get in here. And just tack this in place here. I'm not, again, I think I've mentioned this in other videos, I'm not the world best solderer, but I can get by. All right, now we're gonna do the blue one the same way over here. 
Again, this is the reason, again, here you see the reason why I use these colored, colored wires. So I know which wire goes to where. Now it's just a matter of trying to get this to go in the hole. Try it again. There we are in the hole. And it came right back. Let's see. Let's try a different angle. Let's try going around the other side of the camera here. About into it. Come here, Blue. Where are you? Come here, Blue. It's Blue's Clues. Again, it's probably been a lot easier. And you know what? It will be a lot easier just to remove the black shield wire for right now. There. Okay. Now, you get out of the way. Now I can lay this thing flat and I can actually do something on it. Even though I only just have to solder one wire, it'll make life a lot easier. Remember, violet to E7, blue to E3. There, put it through the hole. Just bend it up there for now. As I said, I'm going to remove the excess. Here we go, and that one's good too. All right. The excess wires are going to cut off. Grab the scissors. I should get a little small pair of nippers to do this. These scissors don't always seem to work very well. Lift up off the camera for a second. All right, so now that's cleaned up. They're hooked up. And now we're gonna hook that one back in. There. Hook the ground, the shield wire back in there to E, what is that, E5. I'm not sure if you can see what I'm doing here, but basically what I'm just gonna do is heat up the hole so I can slide this back in and let it cool without burning my fingers off. There, that one's hooked back up. Now, these are our two wires we're gonna place onto the switch there. Let's put this back in here, like such. I'll grab a few of the screws, the screws to hold it together. Just to keep it in place so it doesn't roll around on me. <laughs> Doo -doo -doo. So you can see this, these boards that they, the printer control board and the others, you can tell that they are basically hand designed. It's not like it's, um, where they made millions of them at once. They're basically hand designed. And they look like they were hand soldered too. Where's my other, where's my other screw? One more screw for me, there it is. One more little screw over here. I should use a magnetic screwdriver so I don't have to sit and hold that, but I got that in there. All right, that's in there. Everything's hooked up there. Let's plug this back in so we don't forget. Now we just have these right here to hook up. Blue to blue, violet or purple to violet. Take these two together. Twist them to hold them together for right now. Grab some flux, grab some solder. The other one. Drop solder on the floor. Let 
my bench seems to be not level. Things like to roll off a bit. I should straighten it out. All right, so now we got those done. Take a little bit of black tape. I don't have small heat shrink, otherwise I would heat shrink them. But black tape's fine. There's not going to be any stress on these things, and they're not going to get wet or nothing. I just don't want them touching anything. They're not power, they're data, but I don't want to scramble. You never know what it's going to do to anything. Especially if it did touch power. So now you notice, we have this little switch right here, out here where the cables go. Now we have the ability of turning it on and off. What I could do too, I just realized, is I could take, hmm, where can I zip tie? I could zip tie this so it doesn't flop around. We'll see. And while I have this open, let me just show you this real quick. That right there is a 6801. That's the microprocessor that runs the printer. And notice, it's socketed, so you could always change that too. And ColecoVision with their stickers. They love those stickers. What's your Swinson say? Well, who knows? Somebody's initials, SR. If you ever look inside your atom or inside of anything from the atom, you will see initials and stickers everywhere. That was their quality control. All right, we're going to start putting it back together. I'll clean up the desk here, and we'll start slapping her together.